This is the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Worthy founder, leader, president, God and King of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress Church of Truth, Divine Salvation. An organization that stands above all organizations. An organization that stands for the fundamental principles of human rights. An organization that stands on the principles of freedom, redemption, international repatriation. Seven or nine miles of Black Star Line ship, according to the words of the mighty prophet, Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. The Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Elder Rastafari. Rising the first Nyabingi in this Western world, in Jamaica, 1950 and 8, from the 1st to the 21st day of March. And rising the red, black, and green, and the red, gold, and green, with the black five point star R and lion symbol, statical and churchical, he has established the Bobo Shanti ceremonial order of Holy Melchizedek tradition. The Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards has written numerous letters to the representatives of the world and the heads of states of many continents, countries, islands. It is recorded that he is the first quote-unquote Rasta man to ever address the Queen of England as it refers to freedom, redemption, international repatriation. Reparation. The Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, as a diplomat, has corresponded and communicated with several high officials of the United Nations. And after the visit of Emperor Haile Selassie I in 1966, in 1967, the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards' name was put on a specific roster of the United Nations and it was told to him by the high official of the UN that his name shall not be taken off unless it was by his permission. It was also proclaimed during the time of Secretary General Uton that the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards was the champion of human rights and justice. The Honorable High Priest was amongst the 31 elders representing Rastafari in 1966 that greeted the Honorable Emperor Haile Selassie I on his visit to Jamaica, King Emmanuel Charles Edwards was the first to receive his medal from the Honorable Emperor Haile Selassie I and to greet the King of all Kings and the Lord of all Lords. Special diplomatic rights from the government of Ethiopia, a member of the United Nations, was passed also to the government of Jamaica regarding the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. From his words and his writing, he came in 1914-15. Historically, it is known that Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards came from the slums of the ghetto, even from the time of Bakawal, to establish a city and a kingdom on the top of the mountain, on the northeastern side of Warwick Hill, as it was said by Marcus Messiah Garvey, nine miles out of the city, ten miles Bull Bay, it has been established. The Bobo Shanti Kingdom, the Order of the Sabbath Day, the Order of Morning Devotion, the Churchical Order, for without the priest, the High Priest Melchizedek, there will be no ceremonial order. The Royal Tradition, Industry and Commerce was established by the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edward. A government within a government. He is a man whose heart is with the poor and the have-nots and those who know him and associated themselves with him speaks highly of him as it relates to the love that he has for his people and they also speak highly of him as it relates to his holiness and his perfection I speak of the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards this documentary has been designed to take a deeper look into this man. Historically, yes, but more than that, who is this man, really? He refers to himself as the Black Christ 
and has established his throne between Marcus Messiah Gavi and Emperor Haile Selassie I, the Trinity, the High Priest of the Trinity and the Son of God. Melchizedek, the same wrestling Jacob of old and the ambassador to Emperor Haile Selassie I. This is all correct, plus much more. The Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Hotel. of the sun of course and, and one of the big mysteries uh, is the uh, the solar flares the, the the sunspot cycle what drives this what is the force behind this uh, Maurice is that the sun is made of plasma which is like a superheated sticky gas and uh, it recognizes that the sun spins on its axis just like the earth spins every 24 hours the, the sun spins every 37 days on its axis but the equatorial region of the sun actually spins more quickly. Then although the North Pole takes 37 days to go round once, and the South Pole does the same, the bit around the middle only takes 26 days to spin once. In other words, the middle of the sun, the equator of the sun, moves a lot more quickly than the uh, higher latitudes. Then because the middle's going around more quickly, the magnetic field gets bent. Then it gets a little bit more bent. And after about 11 years, the the vertical field actually finishes up horizontally across the sun. It's like wrapping spaghetti around the sun or an elastic band. Mm. Uh, if you imagine an elastic band going from north to south, and then you hook your finger in that elastic band as it spins, then you can see the elastic band becomes horizontal instead of vertical. The sun, helium and hydrogen, electromagnetic energy thousands of years as far as history and archaeology can take us mankind has always revered the sun not as sun worship but the ancient man and woman comprehended the solar biological nature of the sun the sun was seen as the chief representative of the life giver the sustainer and nourisher it is the solar system it is the system of the solar and all planets rotate and revolve 
around the sun all aspects of existence can be traced to the sun the air we breathe the water that we drink the ability of sound to travel from one point to the other the sun photosynthesis condensation evaporation and so on the sun life itself the sun the equator of the sun rotates once every 26 earth days while the poles of the sun positive and negative rotate once every 37 days this difference in rotation causes the equator magnetic feline of the sun to collide with the polar magnetic feline of the very same every 87.5 days this process continues until the electromagnetic felines become so encoiled and become so entangled that it causes explosions under the surface of the sun which results in what is referred to as sunspots this is an 11 year sunspot cycle when seen on a computer graph one of the oldest theological symbols is the feathered snake from the ancient of days the ethiopians the ones of Kemet, the ancient people of Nubia and Kush, the Hopi and the Mayans and the Incas, the Ionids, they all revered the feathered snake. The feathered snake or Quetzalcoatl was considered as the physical manifestation of the cycle of the sun. The feathered snake or Quetzalcoatl was considered to be God in flesh. The Nacal tablets portrays the feathered snake passing through the realms at the sinking of moon. A people totally robbed of their identity will be quick to deny such information. But even in the Bible, Christ specifically says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall I be lifted up the serpent or the snake that Moses lifted up was healing the people in the time of the Old Testament and Christ came as the great physician to heal the people in the very same way he compared himself to the serpent and this is why the serpent with wings is seen today as the symbol of the medical fraternity the serpent with the wings from the ancient of days has been seen as the cycle of the sun. The serpent with the wings has been considered from the ancient of days to be God in flesh. The Olmec Kingdom, according to their own calendar, began in 3130 BCE according to some scholars 3114 it is the Olmec people that taught the Mayans and taught the Incas and taught the mystics how to build the great pyramids the pyramid of the Sun and the pyramid of the moon and the pyramid of the feathered snake it is the Olmec people that taught them the ancient concept of Quetzalcoatl of who the Olmec people represented which is the flying serpent the feathered snake it is the Olmec people that taught them the science of the cycle of the Sun and the science of the movements of the heavens the Olmec is the original man from Uganda approximately 700 AD a great king was born in the Yucatan Peninsula, Palenque. He was referred to as Paca, Lord Paca, the great king of the Mayan people. He has gone down in history 
as being the greatest of all the kings that ruled over the Mayan people. And mystically, it is around this time a great sunspot cycle hit the Mayan kingdom at the presence of this man, Lord Pakal. Lord Pakal was considered to be a feathered snake by his own people. The pyramid of Lord Pakal has been mysteriously built to represent the cycle of the sun. The center steps being 26 and the inner steps going down to the tomb is 26 as well. 26 of course is the cycle of the equator of the sun. Lord Pakal came to the throne at the age of nine and lived for 80 years. The king of the mayor and according to the mask that was placed on his face at his burial, Lord Pakal was an Olmec. This king of the Mayans was buried with three statuettes, one specifically made from the Mayan precious stone, jade. And this statuette was of an ancient man with a beard. He was also buried with two other precious statuettes one which has gone down in history to be referred to as the man with the high hairstyle as well as this statuette of an Olmec looking figure three statuettes but at first glance the mask of Lord Packer may look like a crude and hasty work to assemble a mask for the king of the mayans but on closer examinations, there are certain dots located around the eyes. When you take a picture of the mask and make a transparent mirror copy of the mask, then you align certain dots in certain angles. Different images begin to appear right before your very eyes. For example, at this angle, an image of a bat appears, and the bat has a bead in its mouth. When you examine the mask of Lord Packer, Lord Packer had a bead in his mouth. The bat has a bead in its mouth. So the person that wore the mask represents the bat. He was not a vampire. The bat is the ancient animal symbol of Shaite Kotle. The bat is the ancient animal symbol of the Olmec. And in the metaphysical world, the bat is the main equivalent to Anubis in Kemetology. Anubis and the bat are one. When we rotate the original and the transparent mirror copy of the mask with the nose as the pivot this image appears a snake looking straight forward with wings the feathered snake remember the mask belongs to Lord Packer who is considered to be the feathered snake of the males the king of the males the feathered snake represents the cycle of the Sun and is also considered as the son of God S-U-N, S-O-N. The mask continues to exhibit more mystics. For one rendition shows three figures, three beings, three individuals. The first individual represents a young boy. Archaeologists has determined this just because of his natural stare and the youthful look in his face. This young boy also has on a great hat with feathers. In the center of his great hat, there is the picture of Lord Packer. This is made plain by the earrings and this is a representative of an Olmec. Lord Packer's features are in the center of the hat of the young boy that has on the hat with feathers. 
also directly in front of the mouth of the Olmec figure, in front of the mouth of the Lord Packle figure, there is a squatting individual which represents the squatting Buddha. Three specific human type figures are seen portrayed in the mask of Lord Packer when they align themselves with the dots that are seen under the original eye. Keeping in mind, this is done mystically, scientifically, what some will call supernaturally because the mask of Lord Packer was made with bits and pieces of jade stone put together to form a mask and yet still when you take a photo of the mask and then a mirror transparent copy of the photo and align the dots that were placed on the mask you get the snake with wings you get the bat with the bead in its mouth and now you see three figures of a young boy with a great hat with feathers again and in the center of his hat there is the portrayal of Lord Packle the individual who was wearing this mask and in front of Lord Packle's mouth directly in front of his mouth is the squatting Buddha this mask is very powerful this mask is very mystic Scientifically, we are positive that this is Lord Packer. We are also positive that this is the squatting Buddha. So it is safe to say that these three individuals represent individuals from our past. Why? Because when this very same rendition is turned upside down, we get three other individuals which are portrayed as future be. First of all, the obvious Olmec figure with its helmet on its head. The Olmec always has on its helmet. He's the god of war, Shaite Kotle. He bears the burning sun on his back, according to the mythos. This is not just an Olmec, this is a future Olmec. The previous Olmec was Lord Packle himself, the owner of the mask. This Olmec is a great forerunner in the tradition of the Olmecs that is to come after Lord Packle. The Buddha that was squatted directly in front of the mouth of Lord Packle has now changed. To a man with locks and beard. Some refer to it as long hair, specifically to divert from the reality which we will prove. The Buddha has been replaced by a man with locks and beard, and the prophecy of the Buddha, which we will also present, proves that the Buddha shall return with locks and beard. The young boy with the great hat and feathers from the first rendition he has totally disappeared but a very old and ancient man with beard but with no locks has now appeared in the center of the helmet of the Olmec the new future Olmec keep this in mind that the previous Olmec Lord Packer had something in the center of his helmet as well. It is the symbol of the lotus flower. The lotus flower represents resurrection. The lotus flower represents reincarnation. It's an ancient symbol of spiritual rejuvenation and even physical rebirth. So as this rendition of the mask is turned upside down. The young boy with the hat and the feathers has totally disappeared but where the lotus flower was in the center of the helmet of Lord Packle and 
old man now appears that old man in the center of the helmet of the future old man is the same young boy that had the great hat with the feathers when we also observe the statuettes that were buried with Lord Packer the jade man with the beard represents the ancient man in the center of the helmet of the future Olmec and the man with the high hairstyle is the man with the locks the same man that they refer to as the man with the long hair and the Olmec statuette obviously represents the future Olmec seen in the rendition of the mask of Lord Packard the individual that was buried in this very tomb who was considered to be the feathered snake the cycle of the sun s-u-n in flesh which means he was the s-o-n the son of god again according to the ancient theology the feathered snake represents the cycle of the sun just as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness in Kemet, the place referred to as Egypt today, Temeri, the Valley of the Kings. On the 5th of November, one Howard Carter, with his sponsor, an individual referred to as Lord Carnivon, supposedly discovered the tomb of the great king Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun is considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, of the Kemetic kings. He is outstanding in that he is the king that is seen with the bird and the snake on his crown. The Kemetic kings never usually carried the bird and the snake together. This was a title reserved for the cycle of the sun. S-U-N, when he puts on flesh, S-O-N, the son of God, Tutankhamun was considered to be the feathered snake. Many people all over the earth have become millionaires because of the artifacts that were found in the tomb of Tutankhamun. The golden chairs, the golden stools, the golden amulets with rubies and diamonds, chariots and wagons and vases stolen by the real tomb robbers archaeologists sponsors and so-called philanthropists but how mystic it is that the very day that they so-called discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun that very day Lord Carnivan who is said to have been a lover of animals the very day they discovered the tomb of the only feathered snake in the eastern world at least by archaeological standards that very day when they opened the tomb of tut ankh aman which means the living image of aman that day lord carnival who sponsored that whole expedition his canary got out of its cage and his cobra caught the canary and ate the canary the day they discovered his tomb that day his snake ate his bird the same time he discovered the feathered snake Tutankhamun Tutankhamun lived approximately 1353 years BCE approximately 2000 years before Lord Packer Tutankhamun is a feathered snake. Lord Pakal is a feathered snake. Tutankhamun came to the throne at the age of nine. Lord Pakal came to the throne at the age of nine. Tutankhamun, according to the scientific average, lived for 7,200 days, which would have been 19.7 years. According to the status, he was violently killed supposedly but how mystic that as the feathered snake in the east he came to his throne at the same age as the feathered snake in the west Lord Packer 
Tutankhamun was obviously seen associated with Osiris, the Kemetic God, whose number is also 72, as 72 individuals came to the coronation of Osiris, and the sun moves one degree every 72 years. The individual that built the necropolis and the whole burial chamber for Tutankhamun and coordinated the building of all the ancient artifacts that were found. This individual's name is Maya. How mystic it is that although many individuals are not too sure who Tutankhamun's parents are, many scholars claim that Akhenaten is his father. But it is well known that Tutankhamun had a wet nurse and his wet nurse, her name was Maya. The individual that built his necropolis at his death, his name was Maya. The individual who was his wet nurse at his birth, her name was Maya. So at the beginning of Tutankhamun's life, there was Maya. At the end of Tutankhamun's life, there was Maya. Lord Pakal came to be the king of the Maya. The Buddha, his mother's name is Maya. These three individuals have a strong connection with Maya. And these are the three individuals that are seen in the first rendition of the mask of Lord Pakal that shows three faces. The face of Lord Pakal. The squatted Buddha in front of his mouth and the young boy with the feathered hat is the young boy king of Kemet, the other feathered snake, Tutankhamun, who only lived to be 19.7 years and came to the throne at the age of nine. This is but one of the thrones of Tutankhamun, the golden throne with the lion faces of Sekhmet. And you will observe also the 13 snakes on one side of the sun and the 13 on the other side. 13 plus 13 represents the 26th cycle. 13 plus 13 is 26. And of course, the equator of the sun goes around once every 26 days. But what is really outstanding about this golden throne is not just the throne, but the footstool of the throne. This is the procession of the nine lords. If you observe the procession of the nine lords carefully, yes, there are nine individuals here, but there are three types of individuals. For example, at the beginning and at the end of this procession, you would notice that there is a man with bear and no locks. But yet still, there are three individuals within the procession that has bear and locks, what some archaeologists refer to as mere long hair. And then there are four individuals that are very dark which represents the Olmec. So we have nine individuals, but we have three types of individuals. The man with beard and no locks. The man with beard and locks. And yet still we have the man that represents the Olmec. This is quite interesting. These three individuals, are the same individuals that we saw on the future rendition of the mask of Lord Prakal. We saw the man, the elder man with the beard and no locks. We saw the man with the beard and the locks. And of course, we saw the Olmec man with the helmet of which the man with the beard and no locks is in the center of his helmet. That's the same rendition that we see on the footstool of Tutankhamun. 
the man with the beard and no locks the ultimate man and the man with beard and locks keeping in mind that Tutankhamun is in Kemet keeping in mind that Lord Packle is in the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America keeping in mind that Tutankhamun is approximately 1353 years BCE and Lord Packle is approximately 700 years AD Yet both of them are referred to as the feather snakes. We can now identify the first three. But who is the Olmec that Lord Packle became? Who is the ancient man that Tutankhamun became in this new time? And the Buddha, the great Buddha, who is the man that has locks and beard that he has now become. Pyramid text of Yunus and the pyramid text of Pepe II speaks of the original triune god Ptah, Sokar, and Asad. It is Ptah that plunged into the primordial waters, now next his companion, his wife, and emerged as Ra, the sun. Amun Ra, with his wife, created the elements of the earth. Shu and Tefnut, Nut and Gev. From the creational elements and sub-elements, all creation came forth. And from creation itself came the God-man and the God-woman, Asa and Aset, which is referred to as Osiris and Isis. It is Asa and Aset that brought forth Heru, the falcon-head god, which is also referred to as Horus. Heru or Horus is seen in many forms in the ancient writings and the ancient scripts. Hor and Ha, Herakute, he's seen as Heru the blind, he's seen as Horus the elder. The chief of all the Herus is Heru or Horus of Edifu. Heru is a chief god, and as the son of Asar, the son of Osiris, he defeated the enemies in a battle that took 80 years. Horus is considered as the first Christ figure of the mythos and the high priest of the order of Osar, his father. Seen with the hat of Osiris, Horus the Elder is not just the son of God, but God himself. Seen in the book The Act of God, written by William Graham, it speaks of the Horus of the Old Kingdom, being the Heru, the son of Ra himself who came on a mission solely by himself. But in the Middle Kingdom, Heru returned as the son specifically of Osiris and returned with Osiris and Anubis. We must keep in mind that mythos is not mythology. The writings that we are speaking of are highly symbolic, just as the scriptures of the Bible. In the DVD documentary, The Master of Ceremonies, we clearly highlighted and proved that the prophecy of Osiris Asa has been fulfilled in Kadamawe Haile Selassie, Emperor Haile Selassie I. For Osiris was born in Ethiopia, and so was Emperor Haile Selassie I. Osiris was said to become a man at the age of 13. As he became the Eshmak at the age of 13, Haile Selassie I took the title, the Keeper of the Door. At his coronation, 72 individuals came and paid homage to Asar Osiris. 72 nations were represented at the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie I on the 2nd of November 1930. It is Arabia, the first place that Asar ever visited, according to the mythos. Arabia is the very first place Ras Tafari ever visited when he left Ethiopia. Osiris went into exile for exactly five years. 
It is exactly five years Haile Selassie I was absent from Ethiopia, specifically upon the throne, from the 5th of May 1936 to the 5th of May 1941. These alignments and other mystics have been covered in detail. In the Master of Ceremonies, we also highlighted that Marcus Messiah Gavi is the individual that told the masses of the people to look to Ethiopia where a king shall be crowned and he shall be your liberator. He spoke specifically of Emperor Haile Selassie I. As John the Baptist in the Gospel highlighted the coming Messiah, so did Marcus Messiah Gavi highlight the coming Messiah, Emperor Haile Selassie I. In the ancient mythos, Anubis or Anpu highlighted the coming Messiah, Asa, Osiris. If Osiris or Asa is Haile Selassie I, the master of ceremonies. And Marcus Messiah Gavi is the John the Baptist that highlighted Haile Selassie I. And Anubis is the John the Baptist that highlighted Asa or Osiris. Then Marcus Messiah Gavi must be related in one form or the other to Anubis. Ampu or Anubis is the mummifier. He wraps the dead in his mantle and brings them to life. Marcus Messiah Gavi as the forerunner is the first black man to shake and awake the black man and woman in general. It is he who taught the black man that he was an African. Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. Millions of followers international of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. The Black Tiger Marcus Masaya Gavi established black businesses, the first of any kind ever seen. Marcus Masaya Gavi established the Black Star Line Steamship Company and purchased three ships, fulfilling the prophecy that the liberating God shall come in ships. Marcus Masaya Gavi clearly said in his famous recorded speech that when he dies, you should wrap him in the mantle of the red, the black and green because in the new life he shall rise. Esoterically, this is clear mummification instruction as would be given by Anpu, Anubis, who wraps the dead in the mantle and brings them to life. Marcus Messiah Gavi says, when I die, wrap me in the mantle of the red, black and green because in the new life I shall rise. Anpu, like John the Baptist, pointed to the Messiah, Osiris. Marcus Messiah Gavi, like Anpu, pointed to the very same Osiris, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Marcus Messiah Gavi is the Anubis, the Ampu. If death has power, then count on me to be the real Marcus Gavi I would like to be. If I may come in an earthquake or a plague or a pestilence or a death would have me, then be assured that I shall never desert you and let your enemies triumph over you. Will I not go to hell a million times for you? If I die in Atlanta, my work will only just then begin. For I shall live in the physical or the spiritual to see the day of Africa's glory. When I appear in the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me, for in the new life I shall rise up first with God's grace and blessing. To lead the millions of the heights and the fire, the new world no. When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me, for in the new life I shall rise up first with God's grace and blessing. To lead the millions of the heights and the fire, the new well no. Look for me in a world when I'm a storm. Look for me all around you. For with God's grace, I shall come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who have died in the West Indies, and those who have died in Africa. For they do in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. Anpu, or Anubis in the Kemetic theology, is the main bat. The bat is the Ulmet. The very mask of Lord Packle shows him returning as the future Ulmet. Lord Packle with the bead in his mouth is the bat with the bead in his mouth. The Ulmet. Lord Packle is the Ulmet. Lord Packle is Anubis. Anubis again is Marcus Masaya Gavi. 
Marcus Messiah Garvey is the future Olmec. The ancient man in the helmet of the future Olmec, which we have now showed to be Marcus Messiah Garvey, that ancient man is the master of ceremonies himself. Kremawe, Haile Selassie, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Remember that the ancient man was the young boy, the young king, Tutanka. And remember, Tutanka man has already been seen as the feathered snake and linked directly with Asar, Osiris. Tutanka man lived for 7200 days as Osiris's number is 72 as 72 individuals came to his coronation and the movement of the sun is one degree every 72 years. As even the heart beats 72 times per minute and a man's sperm takes 72 days to fully develop. Remember from the master of ceremonies that Haile Selassie's coronation was seen in Psalms 72. Emperor Haile Selassie Asar Osiris. Osiris is Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun is the young boy, young prince, young king seen in the mask of Lord Pakal. Tutankhamun is the ancient man in the helmet of the future Olmec. The future Olmec is Marcus Masai Gavi, the ancient man in the helmet of the future Olmec is Karamawi, Haile Selassie, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. This is but one of the artifacts found in the tomb of Tutankhamun. This is the solar color of Tutankhamun made with hundreds of beads. The solar color shows the cycle of the sun, 37 and 26 and 144 and even 360 but what is mystic is that the sixth row of the solar color of Tutankhamun has 110 beads 110 beads in the sixth row of the solar color of Tutankhamun Lord Pakal was also found with a chain with 114 beads his chain or necklace also esoterically showed the cycle of the sun with 114 beads and the sun color of Tutankhamun's sixth row had 110 beads the mystic Tutankhamun 110 beads Lord Pakal 114 beads Haile Selassie I was 110 years old in 2002 at that very same time Marcus Messiah Garvey was 114 years old in 2002 110 met 114 Tutankhamun's chain 110 Lord Packle chain 114 2002 was the 70 and second anniversary of the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie the first that's the fun right the right honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is Lord Pakal and the future Alma. he is Anubis, the great king and emperor Haile Selassie I is the young king Tutankhamun that has come as the ancient man with the beard and no locks. Emperor Haile Selassie I is the same Asar, the same Osiris. Heru, the falcon head god, is seen as the high priest of Osar, the high priest of Osiris. Heru or Horus, the falcon head god, stayed with us for 80 years. Heru also was baptized by Anpu or Anubis. The true historical identity of Heru is the true historical identity of the man with the beard and the locks in the mask of Lord Paka and the true historical identity of the Buddha. This obviously means that the man with the beard and the locks is in one form or the other directly associated with the Right Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey.
and Emperor Haile Selassie I. This is seven. The Guatama Buddha, Siddhartha, was born in India approximately 500 years BCE. Born to be a king, but chose to become a priest and is considered to be a messiah, a Christ figure, a great teacher, the enlightened one. Genealogically, Siddhartha, the Gautama Buddha, is a member of the Nagas people. The Nagas people are one half of the Nagamaya people who occupied and inhabited the land of Mu. The land of Mu sank in the Pacific tens of thousands of years ago. One half of the Nagamaya people went to the east and inhabited the Americas. And the other half went to the west and inhabited the eastern oriental world. China and Japan, the Koreas, Indonesia and India. These Nagamaya people are the original black people. The Nagamayas in the Americas are the Olmec Maya people. And the Nagamayas in the eastern world are the Nagas people. The Guatama Buddha Sadata is a Naga. It is obvious that the original sculptures and statues of the Buddha are that of the original black man, resembling even the Olmec. They are one people, the Nagamaya people. And this is why it is no surprise that the original Buddha was seen in the mask of the Olmec, Lord Pakal. The Buddha that is seen portrayed as an Indian has been adapted by the culture that has kept his name alive. But in the Bible, the book of Esther, chapter 1, verse 1, clearly shows us that the kingdom of Ethiopia, Cush, went as far as even into India, the black man land, 500 years BCE. The Buddha got his inspiration under a boat tree which the indigenous people referred to as the bow boat tree. Siddhartha taught the critical concept of God as man and God within you. As Christ said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Nepal, the Himalaya mountains, the tiger's nest, the mandala of two parts, the great prophetic vision of the Buddha says that the Buddha shall return and establish his government in the first year of a tripartite decade in the 20th century. And this Buddha, referred to as the Maitreya Buddha, shall return in three beings. And it is Negajuna which shall set up the kingdom in the 20th century. Nega Juna is a historical character whom scholars generally place in South India during the 2nd century AD. But traditional accounts state that he lived 400 years after the Gautama Buddha passed into Nirvana. Some biographers state, however, that he lived for 600 years apparently identifying him with a second Nagarjuna who was known for his esoteric writings and his esoteric priestly teachings. This first and original Nagarjuna is an Indian Buddhist philosopher who articulated the doctrine of emptiness, Shunya and is traditionally regarded as the founder of the Madhyamika Middle Way School, an important tradition of Buddhist philosophy. 
the second Nega Juna was not really Nega Juna by name but only by title and identity. It was an individual by the name of Shanti Deva. He was born in the 8th century. He was an Indian Buddhist monk and is among the most renowned and esteemed figures in the entire history of Buddhism. Shantideva served as the high minister and high priest to a king of whom he helped to rule in accordance with the principles of the ancient Buddhism. The legend says that at the university Shantideva was jeered and mocked by his fellow monk. He was asked to give a lecture. At a specific part of his lecture, when he said specifically, quote, when neither an entity nor a non-entity remains before the mind, unquote, it is said that he rose up into the sky. He began to levitate. And when he went very far up, beyond the clouds it is said that all of his fellow monks witnessed Negajuna approach him in the heavens and proclaim him the chief monk the chief priest this is Buddhist philosophy the mandala says the Maitreya Buddha shall return three Buddha shall arise Negajuna shall establish his kingdom the first year of the tripartite decade in the 20th century this is either 1931 1961 or 1991 for sure in 1930 Haile Selassie the first was crowned Negus Negas Nega Juna Negus Negas means the king of kings Nega Juna is the king of the Negas he was crowned King of Kings on the 2nd of November 1930 when 70 and two nations came and bowed before him Emperor Haile Selassie the first it is 1931 the first year in the tripartite decade in the 20th century it is 1931 that Haile Selassie the first officially established the constitution of Ethiopia the first written official constitution of Ethiopia in thousands of years it was an international hurrah Mandala says the first year in the tripartite decade in the 20th century Nega Juna shall establish his kingdom Negus Naga and since we have already linked Emperor Haile Selassie I with the ancient man in the mask of Lord Pakal and Tutankhamun and of course the Buddha, this is not hard to accept. The master of ceremonies. The Maitreya Buddha shall return as a king and as a priest and as a seer and the priest of the Maitreya Buddha shall establish a kingdom a great city of silver and this city shall be called the Bayon and the Bayon shall be called the city of Maruk Bull and it is Shanti Deva who shall establish this city the priest in Cambodia Angkor Wat the great city of the Buddha where all the original statues and sculptures of the Buddha can be seen with the broad nose and the African lips, the original black man. Angkor Wat was built to represent the Bayon, to represent the city of Maruk Bull, the city of Shantideva. But for years, this city has been covered by a very specific tree known as the banyan tree the banyan tree is very mystic it has its roots mystically growing from the top and coming down the tree covering the tree as if the tree has locks but how mystic it is when they rediscovered Angkor Wat when they rediscovered this city in Cambodia 
which represented the city of the future Buddha, the Bayon, the city of Maruk Bull. They found all of the statues covered with the roots of the banyan tree, giving the Buddha statues, the African Olmec looking statues, the impression as if they had larks. But this is not obscure, not to the mind that understands that the prophecy has already been set in motion from the days of Lord Pakal that the Buddha shall return as a man with locks and beard, the future Buddha, the builder of the future city of the Buddha, the builder of the ancient Angkor Wat and the modern Angkor Wat, the Bayon, the city of Maruk Bull, the city of Shantideva. Bull and Bay and Shanti are key words to keep in mind. And we are positive that Nigajuna, the king that shall return and establish his constitution in 1931, is Emperor Haile Selassie I. So who is the Shanti Diva that Negajuna made his high priest and chief monk? Who is the Shanti Diva that shall return with locks and establish the Bayon, the city of Maruk Bull, the city of Silver? Who is this Shanti Diva? This Shanti Diva is the same Heru. This Shanti Diva obviously is the same man with locks and beard. This Shanti Diva is the man with the high hairstyle. The Buddha. Shanti Diva. Yeah.